This is an art attack. This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> Good to see you again. Hey, have you ever been to a fancy dress party? Yeah? Good, aren't they? The trouble is, costumes can be expensive to make or to hire, and sometimes it's difficult trying to decide who to go as. Well, next time you have a fancy dress party, try this. A flat fancy dress costume. <laughs> and you can go as any character you like. The costumes are cheap and easy to make. Ooh, very nice. You can even try out your acting skills by throwing in some of your character's personality. Yeah. Come and have a look at this. <laughs> I mean, come and have a look at this. <laughs> now, to make your own costume, you need to take a large cardboard box, as big as you can get, open it out flat, and using a pen, draw around your head and shoulders onto the card. Now, you probably need to get someone else to help you do this. And when you've done it, you need to make a hole to fit your face. Now, the best way to do this is take a piece of string and just wrap it around your face like that in a loop, hold it, and then carefully take it away and place the loop onto your piece of card as a rough guide as to where your face should go and how big it should be. And then use this as a guide to just draw around in there like that. See that? And my face is that big on that head. Like that. Now, once you've got the position for your face, you can start to design your costume around it. You need to make sure that any design you do includes this head and shoulder area. Now, I'm going to do a clown design. And you don't need to make the design as tall as you, because it will all help when you're walking. And actually, I think it's a lot funnier. I'm just doing this roughly, because we'll paint it later and cut it out. Keep it simple. In fact, keep it very cartoony. And... When you've done the picture, if you can get a piece of card big enough, you could always add in the legs on the bottom as well. And when you're happy with your design, just cut it out. And as you can see, I've cut the face area out as well, so you can pop your head through. Now, so that you will be able to wear your costume, you need to pierce some holes in it for string or ribbon or elastic. And carefully use a pencil just to pop two holes just above the armpit area like this. And so it's a good idea to stick a ball of sticky tack underneath so you can pierce your cardboard into your sticky tack so you won't harm your furniture. And again, do the same on the other side. Two holes just above the armpit like that. And once you've done that, you're ready to paint it. Now, use poster or acrylic paint for this. And let's start with a nice bright blue for his jacket. Again, nice bright cartoony colours. In fact, make all of the clothes nice and bright and cartoon. Even his bright orange hair. And when you've painted the whole thing, leave it to dry and add on some detail with a pen and you'll have something that looks like this. Uh. Then, using the holes that you made earlier, you need to tie on some string or ribbon or elastic through the holes, like I've done here, so that you can tie your fancy dress costume around your shoulders or your back. And there it is. Fantastic. And the next time you have a fancy dress party, why don't you tell everyone to make their own costume and come in flat fancy dress? And you can create any character you like. Of course, you never can tell who's going to turn up. <laughs> Try it yourself. A flat fancy dress costume.
<laughs> oh, what a brilliant way of creating your own individual style next time you go to a fancy dress party. Hello. Yes, you've guessed it. It's me, the head. No. Don't forget, loop a piece of string around your face and use this as a guide when making the hole to fit your face. Do you want to see my flat fancy dress costume? <laughs> Mrs. Mop! <laughs> and don't worry if you didn't catch all of that, because you can check out the Art Attack website for fact sheets on this fantastic Art Attack and all the others in the show! Whoa! Can I do you now, sir? <laughs> Let's see what they were watching then. <laughs> Excuse me, I can use some sort of big old attack. Yeah, it's time for a big heart attack, I think. Ah, perfect. Uh, no, um, yes, that one. <laughs> ah, there it is. Scary art attack. That monster looked like it was nearly coming out of the screen. 
But being the star of stage and screen that I am, I can tell you that things like that simply do not bother me. <coughs> oh, 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 no, 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 take me, lost you, but spare me. Here's a great way to make your work look important. Whether it's a drawing, a letter, a certificate, or even a little doodle, why not give it an official stamp? Look at this. And it looks very important. Uh, and it's all done with a good old wax crayon and two round coins. Now, you need one slightly bigger than the other, and the idea is to place your big coin on your paper. Now, no one ever stamps things carefully. It's usually just thumped on. So place the coin so that it overlaps a bit of your work, like that, and then draw around the coin. Now, the idea is to make the line broken with gaps so it looks like an official stamp where the ink hasn't printed perfectly. They never do. You could even just go around it twice, just stabbing to make a broken line, and it helps with the effect, just leaving gaps as you go. You want the line to be perfectly round but broken, so it's perfectly imperfect. And, you know, that's a good tip to remember. When doing an official stamp, make it perfectly imperfect. Then take your smaller coin and do the same again inside the big line. Again, make it perfectly imperfect. Just stabbing so you get these broken lines as you go. And now you take that coin away and you've got this border. Then the idea is to add detail to the stamp. Now, they usually have a date on, so just make the numbers as neat as you can, but again, just leave gaps in each of the figures, like that, so it looks like the ink is blotchy already. See that? Making it nice and neat, the right shape, but just with gaps in it. And again, perfectly imperfect. And you can add writing around the border. I'm going to write Art Attack. You can write whatever you want. You put your name, a message, phone number. Now, sometimes the writing on those official stamps is so small that you can't always tell what they say anyway, so I'm just doing some squiggles here. Still looks good. You could even do a pattern or a design just inside here. Again, just to make it look fancy, but again, make the lines broken. And one more up there, I think. Just like a little flower effect up there. So it's perfectly imperfect. And then finally, just smudge it a bit to make it look authentic, as if it was done in a rush and the ink has smudged slightly before it was dry. And there it is, your own perfectly imperfect official stamp. And here's another good tip. You can practice them on all of that junk mail. You know that junk mail that comes through your letterbox? Well, don't throw it away. Use them to practice your official stamps. Looks good on them, doesn't it? And how about trying different designs, like maybe a double stamp there, making him <laughs> look official, whoever he is. And how about this? Top secret on an envelope. This time it's an official stamp with straight edges, which I used a straight rubber to draw around, but again, the lines are broken and perfectly imperfect. See that? Or what about private on a diary? Now, this is a slightly bigger one, which I've added these curly edges to. Again, perfectly imperfect. Try it yourself. Perfectly imperfect. An official stamp. Oh, what a fantastic art attack! Creating your very own official stamps. Hey, I had a go at making one of those the other day. Do you want to see it? <laughs> An official stamp! Get it? <laughs> official stamp! Oh, I'm too much! <laughs> Just sticking in some more of the artwork that you've sent in into my Art Attack scrapbook. Huh. 
and I've ran out of glue, there's so much of it. <laughs> Actually, they're all brilliant. Take a look at some of these. Now, Emma's abstract still life has been done with pink watercolours, coloured chalks, wax cranes and a black pencil. Nice one. And look at this. James' mosaic method has worked really well for this cat. The black outline really helps it stand out from the background. Another good technique. Now, Katie's painted a lovely mottled background and then added cut-out sea creatures in the foreground for her art attack. That too works well. And here's an unusual one. It's a sort of weaving picture, and Hannah's used lots of things to weave with, like wool, silk, ribbons, fabric, and even newspaper. Catherine's picture of a house is really striking. I love the family at the front door and the cheeky person peeping out of the window upstairs. And Emma's tropical fish picture has a real underwater feel, and she's even used watery watercolour paints. So how did you do it, Emma? I painted the background first, and then on a separate piece of card, I drew and painted the things I wanted to look 3D. Next, I cut the shapes out and made them stand out from the picture with little pieces of cardboard box card. Yeah, nice one. In fact, all nice ones. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, I love 3D pictures, and I've come up with a way of going one step further. It's a 3D picture box. Now, first, you need to find an old box and lid. Shoe boxes are perfect for this, and the idea is to draw around the box part, not the lid part, the box part, onto some paper, and then decide on a theme for your 3D picture, and you need to roughly design it inside this rectangle, like this. There's my design. Now, the design needs to be in three layers. You need to have a foreground frame, a middle layer, and a background. And in this Wild West theme, I've got a sign up here, cactus, a school, ground in the foreground. And then in the middle ground, I've got this mountain scene with a windy road. And the background, well, it's a sky and some birds in the distance. Now, once you've got your rough design like this, you need to take the shoebox part and copy the background of your design onto the back of the box. Now, this is quite easy for this one. I've just got a couple of birds in the background there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a sunset in here, but I'll paint that in a minute. So that'll go in there. So that's the background. For the middle layer of your 3D picture, copy the middle part of your design onto a piece of card. Now, cereal box or cardboard box card's perfect for this, but it has to be the same size as your box all the way round. And cut this top area off, and you'll have something that looks like this. Now, when you've done that, copy the foreground part of your design onto the shoebox lid, like this, and then cut out this middle bit so that it looks like this. So now you've got all three layers of your 3D picture. You've got your background inside the box, the middle layer is on the card, and the foreground frame is on the box lid. So I'll just put that there like that, that there like that, and you can see the way it's starting to take shape and you've got a complete picture. 